Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello viewers, welcome to this next lecture on the MOOC course on Mathematical Portfolio Theory. Uh, in this lecture, we will now start a new component of the course, uh, namely the Non-Mean Variance Portfolio Theory, uh, which is going to address some of the issues uh, that are uh, unaddressed as far as the Markowitz framework is concerned along with uh, some of the shortcomings. Now in this broader framework of what I am calling as the Non-Mean Variance uh, uh, Portfolio Theory. I am also going to include uh, and begin with uh, what is known as the utility theory and uh, utility function. So what is the utility theory all about? Utility theory is an important concept in economics which uh, quantifies the amount of pleasure or utility that one derives from one's wealth level. And for this purpose what we will do is that we will look at the axioms of the utility functions and uh, look at the non-mean variance framework essentially driven by uh, the goal of maximizing the expected utility of investors and subsequently this will be uh, used when you talk about uh, uh, multi-step portfolio allocation namely dynamic programming as well as when you talk about the Hamilton-Jacobi-Bellman equation. So accordingly we begin this lecture. Uh, as I said that this topic is going to be on non-mean variance portfolio theory. So the first topic that you look at is what is known as the utility theory and consequent analysis. So uh, utility measures or is an indicator of the relative magnitude of satisfaction that someone derives from something and is a subjective or qualitative index of preference. Now uh, this is a very general statement. So on a more localized level, uh, we say that in the context of our discussion on portfolio theory, utility theory is made use of for the purpose of investment decisions and we will discuss extensively on how this is done. So, in case of certainty, uh, the utility theory says that a person should assign a numerical value to each alternative, so in this case it is going to be each alternative portfolios and then choose the alternative with the maximum numerical 
value. Uh, so, what are the utility theory says is that uh, we will use utility theory uh, in order to uh, tag or assign a number for all the alternatives that are available to us. So, in this case uh, in the context of portfolio theory, we will es essentially look at different alternative portfolios that are available for investment and to each of them we will use the utility theory to assign a number which is a qualitative indicator of the amount of satisfaction that we can derive by holding on to that portfolio and accordingly uh, it also enables us to identify uh, which one of them is preferred over the other in terms of, uh, of uh, investment and uh, from the perspective of uh, our utility as an individual investor. And note that this utility is a concept that is subjective and can vary from investor to investor depending on their individual uh, preference for risk. And this is another topic that we will start off towards the end of this lecture. Okay. So, now we begin with uh, the basic utility axioms. So, this is going to be a fairly elaborate uh, discussion. So, I say that as a prelude or as a preliminary discussion, the utility analysis, uh, we enumerate below the assumptions or axioms. So, the first assumption is the following that people have preferences. So, by this in order I mean that uh, given a choice between uh, two alternatives say A and B this could be investment alternatives we say that the person prefers the alternative A to B is indifferent between A and B and prefers B to A if respectively we have U A greater than U B or U A is equal to U B or U A is less than U B. So, this means that between two alternatives A and B uh, for each of those alternatives I am going to assign a numerical value that is U of A and U of B respectively. Then in case U of A is greater than U of B that we say that the person prefers uh, alternative A to B. If U A equal to U B, then we say that the person is indifferent between the alternatives A and B. And finally, if U A is less than U B, then we say that the person prefers B as compared to A. So, uh, how exactly is this U A and U B determined is something uh, we will discuss as we move along this topic. So, the second uh, axiom that you have here is that people's choice are transitive. So, if a person prefers A to B and prefers B to C, then we say that the person prefers A to C. Uh, so, this means that if we have three uh, alternatives available A, B and C and if an individual uh, prefers A over B and uh, also B over C, then this implies that uh, the person prefers A over C. So, this is consistent with uh, our typical definition of what is transitivity. Third point, objects with 
identical utility and identical in terms of so this should be r identical in terms of desirability uh, so this means that uh, if 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 alternatives have identical utility then uh, it implies that uh, they are identical in terms of uh, desirability or preference from the point of view of the uh, person concerned so this means that if u a is equal to u d and u uh, a is greater than u b then since u a equal to u d I can say that u d is greater than u b. Fourth axiom utility has applicability that means it can be used in case of risky decisions if u a greater than u b and u b greater than u c then there exists a risky decision involving A and C that satisfies the following that is 1 minus probability of C P o, which is denoted by P of C into U A plus P of C into u c is equal to u b, where uh, probability of c is p of c is the uh, notation for probability of uh, c and uh, consequently p of a which is 1 minus p of c is the probability of uh, so, this means that uh, suppose that we have three alternatives A, B and C and the utility of A is greater than utility of B and utility of B is greater than utility of C. So, that means the utility of B is sandwiched between A and C. Then you can create a risky decision involving A and C uh, such that a linear combination uh, in terms of probability of A utilities of A and C will be equal to the utility of B. Uh, so, this means that, uh, so here I take utility of A and utility of C, I multiply the utility of C with probability of C and I multiplied the uh, utility of uh, A with probability of A which is 1 minus probability of C and this is going to be equal to uh, utility of B. So, this is something like we look at an uh, investment and we find that amongst the three investments, I can actually the utility of the investment. Uh, B here uh, is equivalent uh, essentially to the expected utility. Remember that this is the utility into the probability and this is the utility of A with the probability of A. So, this is the expected uh, utility of A and C. So, the utility of B can be written as a, uh, as a combination or uh, as the expectation of the expected utility of A and C. Uh, the fifth axiom is that the ranking of alternatives remains unchanged even if some irrelevant additional object is added to the ranking. So, uh, that is uh, if u of a 
is greater than u of b, then u of a plus u of e is greater than u of b plus u of e, uh, of course, provided that e is something that affects neither a or b. Okay, and now we come to uh, the sixth axiom and this is a really important axiom. So, this says that the risky decisions of investments are driven by the objective of maximizing the expected utility. Uh, so, just to elaborate on this, so uh, that is if there are n possible outcomes denoted by, so this could be alternative investments, so which you denote by O1, O2 all the way to On, then the investors expected utility is what? It is going to be given by E of u, the expected utility. It is going to be given by the utility of uh, the ith outcome multiplied by the probability of uh, P i O i of the ith outcome and I sum this over all possible outcomes namely i equal to 1 to n where u is a positive function that assigns utils that is numerical value. So, remember so far I have been talking about the numerical values being assigned. So, the these numerical values are something which you will call as the utils and this assigns utils u of o i to outcome o i with respective probability of p i of o i which is the probability of o i occurring. Okay, so, the next thing that we uh, come to is uh, the utility of wealth. Uh, so, we will now start getting a little more specific uh, in terms of precisely stating uh, what this function u could be, what are its characteristics and how we can make uh, use of them. And finally, we will also look at uh, how we can actually calculate the expected utility uh, in the paradigm of uh, uh, an investment or among several alternative investment. So, accordingly we start off with the topic of utility of wealth and consequently of course of returns. Uh, so, a utility of wealth function is a formula uh, or a graph which represents the extent of utility or satisfaction derived by a person dependent so, that means, this wealth function is dependent on the different levels of 
wealth. Uh, so, graphically uh, a typical utility function in case of risk averse investor uh, will have the wealth on the x axis and the corresponding utility uw on the y axis and it is basically going to look something like this. Uh, since uh, investments in real world involve risk. So, the consequence of this is that the analysis of a risky investment alternatives involves being equipped with the probability distribution of returns. And uh, this is for each of the investments. So, uh, this is uh, an observation that we have already uh, encountered in a slightly different from earlier and uh, that is that in case of real or investment and by this I primarily refer to risky investment, uh, the analysis of all these risky investments uh, even in the framework of utility theory uh, requires you to have the information about the probability distribution. Remember that when you are always looking at uh, uh, the randomness in any structure in, in terms of investment, uh, obviously you will need to have the corresponding underlying probability distribution. So, in order to even analyze this in case of utility theory, you also need to have to be uh, equipped with the probability distribution of what of the returns, because eventually what you are going to look at is we are going to look at the maximization of the expected utility of returns. And this information about the probability distribution of returns, uh, this has to be uh, uh, made available uh, in case of all the investment alternatives that are actually being considered uh, to be determined for the best investment in the utility theory framework. Uh, so, therefore, a utility function, uh, so each of the investments, uh, investments are alternatives. and a utility function that assigns to each of these alternatives a numerical value or utils. Okay, so, this means that uh, you first have to be equipped with the probability distribution of returns and for each of this alternative investment uh, and also you have to have a utility function that assigns a util to each of them. So, uh, just to sort of uh, sum this up, it means that when you are doing the analysis, you need to be essentially equipped with two things. The first is of course, the probability distribution of the returns and consequently, uh, once you have that, you need to also have a utility function. Uh, on the basis of which you are going to assign utils or the numerical value to each of those alternative investment. Okay, so now, uh, as noted, uh, in the uh, so uh, as I've already mentioned here, that uh, eventually what is our goal is to maximize the expected utility. So uh, drawing uh, motivation from that, so we say that uh, as already noted, the basis for this analysis involving uh, the utils is the maximization of the expected utility. Now, uh, it may be noted that unlike uh, deterministic outcomes such as bonds where 
uh, one maximizes the utility in case of risky outcomes such as investments in, in a portfolio of uh, stocks, we need to maximize not the utility because uh, the return is a random variable. So, we need to maximize the expected utility. All right. So, now let us look uh, at a couple of examples to have a better clarity on, uh, on this topic of uh, expected utility and its consequent maximization. So, the first we look at a couple of examples involving the, uh, the utility uh, and, the, uh, and uh, since it is a random return and uh, it is a risky, it is a random return resulting from a risky investment. So, we will have to talk about not just the utility, but also uh, the expected utility. So, first of all, I will look at a very simple generic example and the next second one is going to be a specific example uh, involving multiple assets and multiple investors uh, and uh, for each of those investors, we assign a different utility function depending on their risk preference. Uh, so, first we look at this example 1. Uh, so, here uh, suppose that we enter into a coin tossing driven risky investment. Now, if the utility function is u, then the expected utility of the risky investment is uh, given by E of u and this is going to be dependent on the coin toss and this is going to be equal to probability of a head multiplied by the utility when a head comes plus probability of a tail into utility of a tail. Let us look at uh, example uh, 2, uh, which is going to be a little more elaborate example uh, with more numbers that show up, so that you can actually uh, start looking at the concept of utils uh, in practice. So, this example 2, so what we do is that we consider the following probability uh, distribution of returns of three assets and I will identify this assets as A1, A2 and A3. Uh, so, now we tabulate the probability distribution so we consider uh, five different possible values of returns namely minus 3% 0% uh, 3% 6% 6 and 9% so for asset a1 uh, we see that we assign a probability of 0 0.5 to the return of 3 percent, probability of 0 to 0 percent, probability of 0 to 3 percent, probability of 0 to uh, 6 percent and the probability of 0 0.5 to 9 percent. Uh, so, this means that the returns can be minus 3 percent with probability 0 0.5 or 9 percent with probability 0 0.5. So, this is like a binomial model. For asset A2, we have minus 3 percent has the probability of 0, then 0 percent return comes with a probability of 0 0.5, 3 percent return comes with a probability of uh, 0, 6 percent return comes with a probability of 0 0.5 
and 9% return comes with a probability of 0. And finally, uh, so uh, for asset 2, 0% uh, uh, returns as a probability of half and 6% return comes with a probability of half. And in case of a third asset which is a bond, 3% uh, return comes at the probability of 3% uh, uh, with a probability of 1 and the remaining returns all have a probability of 0. So, uh, you see that, so from here uh, you can see that the expected return uh, for the first asset is going to be uh, minus 3 percent into 0 0.5 plus 9 percent into 0 0.5. So, this is 3.0 percent. Uh, for the second asset it is 0 percent with probability 0 0.5 and 6 percent with probability 0 0.5. So, again the expected return is 3 percent and in the third case it is a certain return uh, of 3 percent with probability 1. Uh, however, even though they have identical uh, uh, expected returns, they have different risk as given by the standard deviation. So, this turns out to be 6.0 percent in case of the first asset, 3.0 percent in case of the second asset and since the third asset is a bond, so obviously the risk associated with this is going to be 0 percent. Uh, so, this means that, so here I have identical expected return. Okay, so now what you do is, uh, uh, we look at, uh, so we assume that there are three investors with the respective utility functions being, uh, so we will give the utility function as ua of r is equal to 100 r minus 50 r square and this investor as we will see later uh, qualifies as what is known as a risk averse investor. Uh, utility of the investor B is 100 R and uh, this investor is risk neutral and as I said later we will see why uh, this is risk neutral and U C of R is equal to 100 R plus 50 R square. This is a risk seeking investor. Uh, so, the corresponding graph for each of them uh, against R, so I will have R on the x axis. The first one I have a utility of A, the second one I will have utility of B and the third one I will have the utility of uh, C. So, in this case the respective graph look like this. Okay, so uh, what do you do now is uh, we let the returns for the three investors uh, or the, uh, for the three assets, assets B, R1, R2 and R3. Okay, now let us look at uh, case by case of the expected utility of each of those investor. So, first of all we will talk about uh, investor A. So, uh, the expected utility of investor A in case of the return of the first asset, what is this going to be? This is going to be remember that uh, U A of R was 100 R minus 50 R square. Now, uh, R takes the value of minus 3 percent and, uh, and uh, 9 percent. So, you remember that this took minus 3 percent and 9 percent with probability half. Uh, so, accordingly the utility in each of those cases is going to be 100 into minus 0 0.03 
minus 50 into minus 0 0.03 square and in case of 9 percent the utility is going to be 100 into 0 0.09 minus 50 into 0 0.09 square and uh, each of these utilities happen with a probability of 0 0.5. So, the expected utility is going to be 0 0.5 multiplied by the utility at 3 percent and 0 0.5 multiplied by the utility at 9 percent and we add them up. So, this becomes equal to 2.785. Okay. Now, in case of the second asset, what are the returns? So, this in case of the second asset, it is 0 percent uh, or 6 percent with probability 0 0.5 each. So, then the utility values are going to be 100 into 0 minus 50 into 0 square for this case and 100 into 0 0.06 minus 50 into uh, 0 0.06 square which is this case and each of those utils have a probability of 0 0.5 and so the expectation is given by the sum of this and this turns out to be equal to 2.91. Uh, similarly, the expected utility of R3, this is going to be again, uh, so remember that in case of R3, it was only uh, uh, we had 3 percent with probability 1. So, that means that it is going to be 100 into 0 0.03 minus 50 into 0 0.03 square is the utility value. And of course, you know this is multiplied by probability of 1 and this turns out to be equal to 2.955. All right, so, you can actually carry out a similar exercise for investor uh, B and C. So, in this case what you have to do is that you just uh, is the same exercise as investor A except that you just change the utility function. So, for investor B it turns out that the expected utility in case of R1. Uh, this turns out to be equal to uh, 3, the expected utility in case of R2, this is also 3 and expected utility in case of R3 is also equal to 3. Now, uh, let us just come to the last investor, investor C. So, in case of investor C, we have expected utility for first asset this turns out to be 3.225, expected utility in case of second asset this turns out to be 3.09 and expected utility in case of the third asset this turns out to be equal to 3.045. Okay, so, now that we have the numbers in place, uh, we are now in a position to make an interpretation of this. So, for A, uh, you see most satisfaction comes from asset A3. So, if you observe carefully here uh, asset 1 utility expected utility, asset 2 is expected utility and asset 3 is expected utility, you see that the highest is in case of the third asset. So, for the investor A most satisfaction will come from A3. Now, you see in case of investor B, all the expected utilities are identical namely equal to 3. So, this means that for B, the investor is indifferent to each of the 3 uh, asset and for C, you see that the highest value, so it is 3.225, 3.09 and 3.045. So, in case of investor C, the highest value is 3.225 of the expected utility. So, the most satisfaction comes from A1. So, in summary, uh, in, so now remember that inv investment uh, A1 had the highest risk, A2 had the second highest and A3 had the least highest. Uh, or the least value. So, investor A prefers A1 
uh, uh, a, rather A 3 which has least risk and this is consistent with our earlier statement that uh, investor A is risk averse. Investor B is indifferent to A 1, A 2, A 3. So, again this is consistent to the utility function for uh, risk neutral and investor C prefers A 1 which has largest risk and this again is consistent with that uh, investor C is risk loving. So, uh, this is risk averse risk neutral and risk loving. Uh, so, we come to the last topic or rather just the introduction to the next topic that you are going to do and that is going to be uh, on risk attitude and we will discuss this in the next class. But in terms of risk attitude uh, what we mean is that uh, there are different investors have different level of uh, uh, risk preferences. So, as we have seen in the example some of this uh, some of the uh, some investor they can be risk averse, some of them can be risk loving and some of them can be risk neutral. So, uh, what you are going to do is subsequently this concept of uh, risk attitude, uh, we will see this in the paradigm of uh, utility functions and uh, we will look at the case of risk aversion. Uh, risk loving and risk neutral. Uh, so, just to sum up what we have discussed today, uh, we introduced uh, the concept of utility functions and which uh, is a quantitative representation of the satisfaction that one derives from uh, a, a, any uh, a investment strategy that is in the context of our discussion and we talked about the fact that utility functions are used to assign a numerical value or utils among the different investment alternatives which in terms helps us to identify our preferences and we recognize the fact that uh, we need to only calculate what is the utility in case of uh, the returns of uh, any investment being completely deterministic. However, uh, in case uh, we we get into risky investment then the corresponding utils is going to be a random variable and so we need to calculate the expectation of that. So, irrespective of whether you are looking at just the utility for the deterministic case uh, or uh, the expected utility in case of the random uh, in case of the random case uh, we need to the eventual goal from the point of view of the investor is to maximize the utility or the uh, res, uh, expected utility in the, in the respective cases. And uh, we defined uh, uh, what is going to be the expected utility and then we looked at two examples, one which was a simple example involving a binomial structure and then we looked at a, a well tailored example of uh, three assets and three investors. Uh, the three assets uh, were designed in such a way that each of them had their expected utilities to be identical, but they had different levels of risk and we choose the utility functions for the different investors uh, to reflect uh, their nature or their preference of being risk averse, risk neutral and risk loving and why these utility functions qualify as, uh, as a risk averse, risk neutral and risk loving respectively is something that we will look at when we discuss the next topic of risk attitude uh, and namely uh, characteristics of uh, utility functions for investors who are risk averse, who are risk loving and who are risk neutral respectively. So, this brings us to the end of this lecture. Thank you for watching.